Hello everyone, my name is Paul Young and I'm very uh, pleased to be here with a short video to explain the key features of the Megarox trial. It's a trial that I hope will change intensive care research forever and I hope that at the end of this talk you'll feel as passionate about it as I do. So one of the key things that has informed the design of this trial is the findings of the ICU ROX trial. Um, a trial of conservative oxygen therapy in mechanical ventil mechanically ventilated adults in the ICU, published in the New England Journal of Medicine at the end of 2019. Um, and in that trial, we, we found that the relative risk of death was slightly higher for patients allocated to conservative oxygen therapy than for usual oxygen therapy, but the 95% confidence intervals range from a 20 from a 13 percent reduction to a 23 percent relative increase in mortality so and really encompass the possibility of both clinically important uh, benefit and clinically important harm so overall i think icu rocks has helped restore equipoise about oxygen therapy in the intensive care unit but it's certainly not a definitive trial in fact, uh, if you conduct various forms of statistical trickery, you can work out that uh, conservative oxygen therapy based on the distribution of data in ICU rocks has a 46% chance of increasing mortality by one and a half percentage points and a 19% chance of decreasing mortality by 1.5 percentage points. So, uh, important uh, effects uh, these would be no doubt for the many tens of thousands of patients who receive mechanical ventilation in the intensive care unit around the world each year in fact for every hundred thousand patients treated this would equate to 1500 lives lost or saved the problem is that we just don't know uh, which intervention it is that uh, loses the lives or saves them and so the equation is really simple to work out what to do next. With a baseline mortality rate of 29%, to detect a 1.5% absolute risk reduction in mortality with 90% power, this is the number of patients that you need to enrol. Uh, this is 40,000 patients. And this is the reason why uh, Megarox uh, is really, um, I think, a new uh, phase of intensive care research. It's a trial that will get us to uh, a very small mortality effect that still matters um, for an intervention that we are applying to thousands and thousands and thousands of patients all of the time, all around the world. So I don't think the question is why conduct this trial, I think the question is just how. And so the answer is Megarox, and Megarox is a trial designed to be very easy to enroll, very easy to implement, very easy to collect data, and very easy to consent patients. It's going to be very easy to enroll patients because it's going to be very easy to find them. To get into the trial, you need to be emergently admitted to the intensive care unit and invasively ventilated or intubated in the intensive care unit. So this means all patients except for those admitted to the intensive care unit after elective surgery uh, potentially eligible. The only patients who are excluded are those where the treating clinician uh, doesn't consider that enrolment is in the patient's best interests. And so this would be, uh, for example, if the patient's death was inevitable, or if either one oxygen regimen or the other oxygen regimen being tested was clearly indicated or contraindicated. So it has to be very easy to implement. And the good thing is that we have tested uh, the design or, or tested uh, the interventions and, and they have developed from what we learned from the ICU ROCKS trial. Um, this is the conservative oxygen therapy intervention and this uh, is a lot of information on the slide, but there are some key points that I would like to make. The first point is that we will use upper limit alarms. So monitored upper limit alarms to sound when the oxygen saturation is 95% or more. Um, in all situations, except for when the patient is breathing 21% oxygen. So whenever the oxygen saturation measured by pulse oximetry is uh, towards the upper range, we will treat that as uh, an emergency. 
and reduce the amount of oxygen that the patient's breathing in order to minimize the risk of hyperoxemia. When the patient's in the green zone, so when the oxygen saturation is in the target range, the protocol requires that the lowest amount of oxygen possible is used to achieve a saturation that is above the lower limit. So wherever possible, this means that the patient should be breathing room air. Um, in the ICU ROCS trial, mechanically ventilated patients were breathing room air for around about a third of all hours um, overall. Now, the lower limit um, of oxygen saturation is 91%, i.e. the lower limit alarm is set at 90%, unless the treating clinician determines a different lower limit. Um, so the treating clinician can determine an acceptable lower limit for oxygen saturation that's either higher or lower than 91% um, for an alarm to sound at either higher or lower than 90, depending on what they believe is appropriate for a given patient. So, um, the alternative regimen, this is the usual oxygen therapy regimen, labelled here as liberal oxygen. Uh, that's because usual oxygen is liberal. Um, and the key things about this, uh, this treatment arm is that there are no protocol defined upper limits, so you can't use upper limit oxygen alarms. And you have to use um, an inspired oxygen concentration of um, 0.3 or greater whilst the patient is invasively mechanically ventilated. So this is because we know from observational data that using an FI2 of less than 0.3 uh, whilst invasively mechanically ventilated is not um, very common in usual practice. And we need to guard against contamination of um, the treatment arm. So people starting to use conservative oxygen therapy because they've been exposed to it. And that is doctors and nurses starting to use it because they've been exposed to it. An important point to make in relation to this slide is that the lower, the requirement to not use an inspired oxygen concentration of less than 0.3 only applies while the patient is invasively ventilated. So after the patient is, uh, ex has been extubated, the oxygen can be uh, ceased at the discretion of the treating clinician or turned down to less than 0.3 as clinically appropriate. Has to be very easy to collect data, and I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this point, but needless to say that the primary endpoint is in hospital mortality, so no data will be collected after the patient's discharged from hospital. And most of the data we need are collected at the time the patient's randomised. So when you randomise a patient, you get a screen that looks like this, it captures the date of birth, the patient's uh, gender, um, the date of ICU admission, the date of hospital admission, and the diagnosis. Um, you confirm that the patient is, was admitted to the intensive care unit after, um, not after elective surgery, or invasive ventilation was started in the ICU. Finally, you confirm that the patient is within the enrollment window, so there are 12 hours to enroll the patient. Um, you confirm that they haven't previously been enrolled in the trial and that uh, you consider that them being in the trial is in their interests. You then get a printout like this which uh, tells you what the patient's been randomized to and what you should do for that individual patient. Now a really important point here is that the information that you've already entered at the time you randomize the patient will then be used to identify the patient in an existing data registry uh, to obtain the other outcome data that we need for the trial. So it means it's very efficient for the research coordinators, very little information to collect. Um, and it should allow us to do a very large trial in a very short space of time for a relatively low cost. So the admission source, the admission type, the illness severity, the IC length of stay, the hospital length of stay, and in-hospital mortality will all come from existing data sources. And so that's the bare bones of Megarox. Um, it's, as I've described, those are really the conventional elements. The only part that's sort of a little bit unusual is this 
registry embedded trial that collects information, uses information that are collected already. The really novel elements are what I'm gonna talk about now. And these are the things that I think make this trial um, special and exciting for critical care research. So Megarox isn't just one trial, it's in fact um, a series of parallel trials within an overall 40,000 patient envelope, all powered um, to detect realistic treatment effects for large subgroups where it's biologically plausible that the effect of oxygen might uh, differ among those subgroups. So sepsis, hypoxic, ischemic encephalopathy, and um, other brain pathologies. Based on ICU rocks, we anticipate almost 7,000 patients um, will be enrolled in the Megarox HIE trial. Gives us greater than 90% power to detect a four percentage point absolute difference in in-hospital mortality, um, which is less than half of the difference that we observed in this subgroup in ICU rocks. For patients with sepsis, we know that uh, the neutrophil oxidative burst depends on oxygen. Uh, it's highly plausible, in fact, that uh, restricting the amount of oxygen available might dampen the immune response and worsen outcomes for patients with sepsis. And so for patients with sepsis, our hypothesis is that liberal oxygen will improve outcomes. We anticipate 10,000 patients in Megarox will have sepsis, giving us greater than 90% power to detect a three percentage point absolute difference in in-hospital mortality. Again, much smaller than we saw um, in ICU rocks. We will have almost 9,000 patients with other acute brain pathologies, giving us greater than 90% power to detect a three percentage point difference in absolute mortality in hospital mortality for this group of patients, where we again hypothesize that actually liberal oxygen will be the preferred oxygen strategy. So um, Megarox is a randomized controlled trial, but one of the special things about Megarox is that it has adaptive randomization for all these subgroups that I've mentioned, so that based on the data accruing in the trial within each individual subgroup, if it looks like your risk of dying with one treatment strategy is lower than with the other, the probability that future patients will be enrolled and randomized to that strategy goes up. And so in this way, in Megarox, every trial participant benefits from the data accrued from previous trial participants, and every trial participant uh, provides data that benefits all of the patients who come after them. So the trial really is designed to create the sort of learning healthcare system where we learn as we go, and um, once we have definitive evidence for individual subgroups, we can um, publish those data for that nested trial and all patients can receive that treatment from that point on. Um, this is my Twitter handle. This is my email address. If you have questions about the trial, um, please uh, send me an email, drop me a line. I will reply instantly. Um, and I really hope that you will... Uh, embrace this trial, enroll the patients in your intensive care unit and help generate new knowledge to change the intensive care world.